All right, welcome everybody. Uh, in this video, I, I jump right into the action, so I wanted to give a bit of a preface that uh, this this video is video eight, and in video seven, I kind of stop in the middle of the troubleshooting right as I finish the build and did testing of electrical levels and whatnot without the tubes. We jump in here where I add the tubes and start testing from there. So if you're just going to watch this, that's fine. It may be a little weird start, but the previous video will make it make more sense, or if you just watch the whole series, it will probably make sense as well. So either way, uh, enjoy. Thanks. All right, one other thing I didn't don't remember if I've mentioned before, but I was able to get myself a Raytheon uh, uh, tube for the uh, 6N7 phase inverter. So set that aside, and we're going to now start the uh, slow ramp-up process again. Um, got 9 volts. Okay, so the power switch is on here, and we're going to slowly just ramp up power, kind of monitor. And I won't be able to monitor a whole lot on these tubes for the, the heaters because they do not have, they're all metal tubes, so I can't see the glass, inside the glass. Also, we haven't exceeded the level where, we're at 48, where the light is turning on, although I think I see it starting to glow a little bit now, so we are slowly getting a dim bulb, we're up to 60 volts. That thing seems angry, smoking, or popping, or clicking, so that's all a good sign. 110 volts. Alright, so I'm going to switch over to DC volts, and we're going to check our rail. At the A point up here, oh, that was smart of me. I just touched it to ground on accident. This is close to the power. 373 volts. 289 volts. We should have nothing on ground. We don't, okay. Um, but yeah, it looks to me like we are, we are cooking with Pam. And I still have one hand in my pocket. But if you notice, the voltages are a little lower now. 156 here. That's because the tubes, when they start drawing current, also lower. 117. Uh, 91. 91. Yeah, so that's that's because of the biasing and whatnot. 95. And the power tubes, I've got 289 there. And what is my grid? Let's see. Through the power trans. Yep, 287. So my grid and my... All that's looking good. Grid. Oh my god, I'm getting that in right. There we go, 289 on this guy. Uh, 287. Okay, so we're getting what looks to me like consistent values. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly shut down. Well, I don't need to shut this down. I'm probably going to leave it running for a while and keep an eye on it. But I am going to hook up my, I'm going to stop filming, hook up my oscilloscope, plug in a, a sine wave on the input, and then start monitoring the output. Before I plug in the guitar, I just want to see good-looking sine wave coming from in to out. So we'll, we'll get to that in here in a minute, and I'll bring you back into the what we're doing. The input signal is there. As soon as I get to the other side of the resistor, though, it's gone, and I don't know why. Um, it makes me think that I may be accidentally grounding something. I'm not sure. But... Uh, if I plug into the mic input, which is this one over here, that is wired correctly because I actually get signal, both on the input and up. And if you look there, you can see it as I adjust the volume. What's the trouble, sir? It goes up and down. Hey, it works. What I might do is plug a guitar into it here and try it out in a minute with the speaker hooked up on the input that's working, and then we'll try and troubleshoot the other one. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, we're plugged in here a little bit of hum. Not brutally hard. I might have to look into that, but look at this. So that may be just starting on it. We'll probably hook up an actual mic a little later, but it works. So the other thing I'm going to try then, I'll turn that volume down. I'm going to hook into one of these inputs and just see if maybe. Nope, nothing. I'm just guessing that I probably wired it wrong and it's grounding. Because if I get this guy and I hook this right here, over here you'll see, you'll see the signal. But as soon as I hook past the resistor, nothing. So I'll shut her off and we'll play with that. But the good news is it's, it's working. now. I, I kind of wonder, I, I did this one because Josh Hami uses it. I almost wonder if he is using this this input because it's got some really... 
heavy power at really low volume. I know that's clipping on the thing, so we'll have to probably be muting it, but I'm pretty happy man. Okay, I figured it out. I had, I started testing, I, I was testing around here and not seeing anything wrong, but then I started testing over here and I was getting ground on this input point. So what's happening is the signal was coming through, but then when it got to this pot, it would just go straight to ground. It wouldn't go past it to the actual tube. So uh, I desoldered it and then tested it that the ground was gone. I resoldered it more carefully. I'm guessing that one of the one of the wires might have been going down and touching the, the pot when the pot was grounded. So we're in business. All right. Well, everybody, she's done. Figured out the problem. Um, effectively, there were a couple of minor things. One was a layout issue. I had accidentally not connected the output from the treble into the point where the 750 microfarad joins it before heading it off to the grid of the next, the first uh, phase, uh, phase inverter input. That solved that problem. Um, also, I've done a slight mod. The This is the microphone input, and these are the two instrument inputs. The microphone input was just way too hot. Like, I could turn it to point 0.1, and it would be distorting and overdriven and sound really bad. I'm sure microphones tend to be just way lower input signal than what you get from a guitar, so that's why. But um, so I did something that was suggested on the forum where I split the load. The 100 ohm resistor, only half of it goes into what's happening before. So, so about 47 my, uh, K comes off the anode and goes into the 0 0.01 before it goes on. And then that goes down to the positive where it hits another f about 50, I think it was a 56 K resistor. So it's still close to 100 K total to get the voltages down where we need to, but we're, you're taking off the output at a, kind of a different point in the chain. Uh, the other change was to add another 100k resistor in the input line instead of no resistance, and that's to kind of tame it down a little bit. So I'm going to play a little bit first of just the clean channel, and uh, you'll get a feel for that. And then, um, if you really kind of push it a little with the rectifier, if I were to bring the volume up a little bit, I don't want a clip here, I might, but. You start to get just a little bit of harsh edginess to it, but not bad. Pretty clean the whole way. That's at max volume. All right, so let's try. We'll turn that down. And we'll put us into the uh, other input. So already at lower volume, this is kind of the drive channel, really. It's got two of the uh, 6SQ7 preamp tubes, so. Quite crunchy already, and I'm just barely up. Effectively for this guy, it would be great as both a clean amp and an overdriven amp. If you're using the overdrive channel, you can't go too hot. And then of course it has a treble, so it's really a lot of heavy, harsh tones. See how that on my uh, my uh, bridge pickup, it's pretty harsh. So we can dial that down a little. Beautiful sounding amp. 
pretty happy about it. Um, you can kind of see the full complement up here of the um, tubes. Uh, these are the these are all metal covered, which was kind of cool. I, I like that. I've heard these 6L6s don't always sound the best, but these ones are supposed to sound great. So you know, eventually, if I keep the amp, I may replace these with some regular tube, glass tube ones. Uh, not a big deal, but I'm looking to I might sell it as well. We'll see. So if I'm going to keep making amps, I can't keep them all. So at any rate, thanks everybody for watching. And uh, keep your uh, amps biased hot and keep the jams coming.